Hi everyone and welcome to my new recording studio or rather my office with some posters and Lego in the background. I'm Nikolai and as you may know I started live streaming on Twitch a couple weeks ago and when I usually won't post streams from Twitch here on YouTube I thought I made an exception because last Friday we did something really cool. We combined Graal's ahead of time compilation with Java 11 scripting capabilities to give you a really comfortable and fast scripting experience with Java and I thought I'd give it a try to present this here on YouTube. Uh, I take the first part of that four hour stream and I cut it down, speed up a couple parts that were not that interesting. I would explain what exactly is going on at the beginning of the stream. I'd love to hear what you think about that, about the format. And if you want to drop by, there's a link in the description box. Now, go live. Sound now, I guess? Sound? Please tell me there's sound. Please tell me there's sound. Yes. <laughs> so the sound was the reason why OBS kept crashing. So, what are we gonna do today? Um, so since Java 11, you can write single source file execution well, you can't, that doesn't make sense. Since Java 11, you can write a single source file, just a short file, and you just throw it at the JVM, and it will compile it in memory and run it. And that's cool, it essentially means that you can use Java as a scripting language. Unless there are like two other downsides. Java doesn't have the ideal programming model for scripting because it's a little bit verbose, but also it takes like a second to boot the JVM. And this is really unusable for any kind of small script. So I had this harebrained idea there is this Graal ahead of time compilation thingy where you can use Graal to turn your Java program into a binary and then you can run that binary really, really fast. That's basically what the, all the hype about Quarkus IO is about. Like you take your application and having it ahead of time compiled to something that runs really, really fast. Particularly it, it launches really, really fast. That's the most important part here. Okay, so how would that work? Well, I figured what would be nice would be to take a script file and instead of giving it to the JVM, we give it to our own script. And that script does one of two things. First, it checks whether it already had that file and ahead of time compiled it. And if it did, it just launches the binary. And then that would be really fast. Or if it didn't yet pre ahead of time compile this thing, it just runs the script as is and ahead of time compiles in the background. And then stores it somewhere on disk, I guess. I don't know. And then the next time you launch the same script, it launches it uh, launches the end of time compi compiled version. So that's the idea. <laughs> and that's exactly as far as I went with this. So I had this idea and, and I like I played around with chaining scripts a couple of weeks ago. And that's all. Like and there's really a ton of things that I don't know about this. For example, um, I'm really not great with like piping input from scripts into other like processes into other processes in Java. I guess we have to somehow figure out how exactly Graal works and how to compile with it. Also, uh, the question is, like, what version of Java does Graal even support? I heard it's only Java 8, but I don't know that, and that would be sad, so I have to figure that out as well. And then we have to, like, build a cache, right? Somewhere on disk, we have to store the, the, the files and then pull them out later, so the binaries, basically, and then pull them out later. So aggregator, you say that sounds easy. I'm not sure whether you're being facetious here. Maybe you are. <laughs> like if, if we would know more, if I would know more, I think it would be easy. Alas, I don't. So it won't be. It would be hard. Um, okay. So I thought we'd start this project from scratch. Oh yeah, it's just a matter of implementation. Um, so we, I thought we'd start this project from, uh, project from scratch. I have nothing here yet. So the first thing we need is a name. Yeah, looks like that's gonna be it. Okay, it's two votes. I'm gonna add my imaginary vote. This is already three votes for Kalis. So let's pick Kalis.
Okay, so what I want to do, I'm not sure what I can keep when I can keep doing that because I tend to, I, I may forget, I may end up forgetting. But my plan is uh, to commit and push quite frequently. So if you're interested, you can check this out on your own machine and have a look at what I've done so far. Cheers, by the way. Where do we start? First thing, we need a Hello World thingy demo. Good. So th th this is the thing, right? So now we have the script file here and I'm going to use the IntelliJ terminal a lot, I think. Um, so what you would have to do in, in the past would of course be Java C, oh, I hope I get this right, uh, demo hello world scripts into the directory, no, the other way around, Java C into the directory uh, build, which I think doesn't exist. Yep. So in the past, we might have done this. And then in build, we have the script class, and then we can go Java uh, um, mino dash cp for class path build, and then we want to launch hello scripts, I guess. Yes, okay, so this is what we would have done in the past. This is the um, this is the the two-step process that, that 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 sucks, right? If you if you want to write scripts at all, that can't be a thing. But since Java 11, which on my command on my command list is Java 11, we don't have to do that anymore. Instead, we can simply go hello world dot Java and run it like this. So now you can see it takes a while, right? We we'll launch the JVM in in memory compiles a thing, and there you go, it launches that. This is not really a great way to launch a demo, uh, launch a script though, because first of all, you need to still name the binary and then hello scripts.java. That's kind of stupid. So, what you can do instead um, is you can actually add a shebang line. It would be this or, or this. <laughs> let's see, I tend to forget. And it's usr bin. That's in my case where I would find Java 11 on my machine. Let's use it like this, USR. So what the shebang line on, on those of you who are only working Windows, uh, I don't think that the concept exists there, I'm not sure though. So on Linux, on Unix-based system, on macOS and on Linux, what this line tells uh, the, the shell that you're running this in is use this binary to execute the file you have in front of you. So what I can do now, um, well, and then also, by the way, you don't have to call it uh, uh, Java class anymore, so you can actually rename it. So we can now uh, rename this, let's put this into build for now, uh, because you have to experiment a little bit with it. Let's call it hello scripts. Scripts. What? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Like, okay. Um, let's use it like this. Shut up. Okay, and so we, we, we can use it like this almost. We can now we can almost run hello scripts. Hello scripts will just mean uh, to the shell that we're using here, uh, use this binary to execute the file, um, which doesn't work quite like that because then we have to add this. This is basic. This is something. There's a technical reason. There is no good simple explanation unless we go into how exactly um, the scripting engine, the scripting thing works, which I don't wanna. Uh, so. Now we can change the. Let's make it executable. Executable? Who knows? Executable, executable. Eh, build hello scripts. Bad interpreter, no such file or directory. Uh, why not? Is it the other way around after all, maybe? Or did I do something else? Is there something else I did wrong? No. Um, There's a small mistake hiding somewhere. Oh yeah, that I think was the reason. Yeah, there we go. Okay, right. So now we have something which is called Hello Scripts, which looks a lot like an, you know, like a native script to the, to the operating system. And you can just run it. So now my goal is to take this and don't use the Java 11 binary here. What I want to use instead is our own wrapper. And I want to write the wrapper in Java 
which of course in, initially just keeping like that is, is just pointless right because if the even if our script does all the amazing thing with Graal and it can just launch these things these binary really quickly then running our script just launching our script still takes like the second or whatever um, that this takes so eventually once we're done we would have to take the wrapper that I write now and also create a binary from that right so that's kind of a setup step that you need and if this project would ever like come to a stage where it makes sense to use it for other people then that would be a necessary setup step Com uh, define where the uh, where the head of time compiler lies and the first step would then be to compile the wrapper to the um, to a binary that works on your machine so for what we're going to do today is just write the wrapper if, if like depending on how far we get but we're just going to write the wrapper and then the wrapper itself we won't deal with how exactly to do that that's just something for for future for future people to solve okay so now we have this what i also want to do is i don't want to keep doing these tips these steps manually so what i really want to have um is some kind of setup -y step so i want to have like a script that i can just run and just does the whole let's try whether this works for us let's call it demo.sh Um, so what this does is it t just takes this file and removes the first comment that it finds and So because like as I said, I want to I want to write I want to deal with this file But particularly with the file that we're going to write later. I want to write these as a Java class to get all the support from from IntelliJ But then during the demo, you know, I just want to create the, um, the script like this one That's what we're going to do. So the demo sh is going to basically use this set command um, so first we're gonna rm dash rf the build directory, and then we're gonna set demo hello scripts dot java, and we're not gonna type. Oh, <laughs> daughter's here. Screams. Open the door. Super. This is like Gandalf. 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 Okay, I'm gonna Gandalf is. Okay, so now I can tell who, who Gandalf is. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, take the output of this and pipe it in pipe it, pipe it into build slash hello scripts, and then we're gonna make that executable. <laughs> I think right. This, and then we're gonna run it. So let's see whether demo sh does what I wanted to do. I got it. Awesome. Um, no such file directory. Oh yeah, right. Um, makes a lot of sense to recreate the thing after deleting it. Hello scripts. Okay, that worked. Great. So that what that means for us is we can now deal with just the blank Java file with a pure Java file and never have to look into this kind of like stupid script that's created from that. Okay, that's good. So the next step would then be to pipe this into our own script. Let's do that. Or code f x Kalis dot. I like the name. Kalis. And no, I'm not ashamed to pat myself on, my, on the back. Uh, okay. So by the way, uh, this we have to fix this, of course, at some point, right? This is uh, there has to be a like a non not fixed path here okay um, what do we do here so this will be the target uh, where the other script arrives and I guess it would arrive in the arcs right so array dot arrays dot stream the arcs and for each we can system of print line this. Okay. And now hello scripts wouldn't use that anymore. Instead it would use where are we? We are in code. I I'm just I'm just gonna not try to figure out how to put relative paths here for now. So I'm just gonna put a path 
yeah, absolute path basically. Code Kalis build Kalis. I think this will be the final name in the end. So if we run this now, we didn't yet include the Kalis main script main file. So if we run this now, we should see Bash complaining that it can't find the Kalis thing. Right, bad interpreter. Yeah, exactly, can't find this. Perfectly. Per perfectly? Perfect, makes sense. So what we do instead is, uh, we're gonna use this trick again. So now we do the same trick to pipe out, to pipe to remove the comment, but otherwise turn the file, the source file into a script file. It's still the same file, but mostly make it execu executable. Okay, I think this should work now. Drum roll. Nope. Hmm. Why not though? Does it have to be... Does that not expand maybe? Oh, sorry. That doesn't help. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't expand the, the tilde. Never mind. And this ah awesome. That's what I what I hope for. So what we get here, what we get here, this is the, this is the output of this. We had one argument, and the argument was the path to the script file. Neat. I guess now we can start putting together the path and exec uh, execute the, the script that was handed to us, right? Um, I looked that up some time in the past. I think it was user dear. No, get property. Get property user dear, maybe. I'm using TypeScript a little bit in the past and just not having to use semicolons is so awesome. Oh, by the way, maybe I should increase font size a little bit. Would that help? What, that was, that did already increase font size? Ah. Only here though, right? Did not here? Never mind. Um, uh. Awesome, yeah, so that was right. So user here gives me the directory um, where the JVM launched, which at the moment is this directory. Which is because this is where I execute demo, right? That's the reason. I execute demo here. And that's the reason for that. Oh, wait. Maybe that's not what I need in the future. What would I need in the future? Uh, um, okay, wait. So if I go into build and then run hello scripts then I get... no, this seems to work oh, it seems to work, okay I think it, I think we're fine here, right? these are the two pieces that I need chat, got any opinion on that? does this look okay? let's just hope it looks okay um, so we're gonna say paths oh, ha 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 what features can we use here? I guess we don't know until we use Gra, right? We should try that out. Okay, so this is how we can do that. Should we, should, we, should we compile something actually? Let, let's try that. Let's compile Hello World. Let's do this and then... Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, we're not going to use that all the time. Oh, I already created that link. How awesome of me. Uh, yeah, 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 that was a couple of weeks ago. I remember apparently when RC9 was kind of kind of up to date. Yeah, you spotted it first uh, faster than I did. Devpack, thanks, thanks for that. Um, native image demo hello world, uh, hello script Java. 
As far as I know, this takes a while. I think maybe it needs to be bytecode after all. Would that be weird? No, that would be weird. But it works with jars, and jars contain bytecode. Yeah, let's just try. Let's just assume. Um, uh, RM-RF build. So it doesn't exist? Oh, in source. Yeah, in source it doesn't exist. Sure. Um... Okay. Now, if this doesn't work, I really don't... Ah, yes, something works. Okay, so what does it do? Create a class list. Cap, whatever that means. Set up. Five seconds. Or oh, at five seconds, what that was set up. And now it does stuff. Or this is when setup starts? Who knows? So that's interesting. It um, no, that's ah uh, whatever. The analysis in universe is interesting. So it tries to uh, determine what classes you actually use and then compile only those. Total thirty, only thirty seconds. <laughs> that's neat. So now we have a hello scripts here, which is executable already. Executable. Bam! Wow! Look at that. Woo! How fast is that? The answer is very, very fast. That's like instantaneous. At least for Java. Three milliseconds. Holy crap. Look at this. And that's why people are so in love with Quarkus IO, the new, the new thingy which uses Graal to compile entire web applications, because that could be the launch of your web app. Well, unless you talk to a database. <laughs> but other than that, uh, that's pretty neat. Awesome. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Right, but what I wanted to do is I want to figure out which Java version works. So, um, name your favorite Java 11 feature. Quick. A thing that only exists on Java 11. Now, Let's try the Java C thingy. So first of all, this should fail because this is Java C 8, right? So Java C 11 should do something. Great. Now native image. Where is it? Whoa, okay. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, this only recognizes class five versions up to 52. 11, 10, 9, 52 is 8. Eh. Like, I... W <laughs> yeah, I think it is. It looks like it, yeah. It's still based on JDK 8. Okay, so to summarize, we're stuck with Java 8 everywhere. Ah, damn, even in the scripts? That's bad, because like var makes, like the stuff like var or the new HTTP client, which are like, mean, which means stuff that, so if you write scripts, then maybe talking to the internet is one thing you want to do. It's nice that you can do that with a proper API that's on board and don't need dependencies for that. Um, so that's good. Then... Var, of course, is obviously good. Switch expression, stuff like that. That's make, that makes scripts more concise, which is how you want to write scripts. Uh, but we can't. Apparently, we can't. Uh, so that's really bad. So that means everything is stuck to Java 8. Okay, let's, let's track back to where we started, where we, want, where we started with this, with this thing. We want to 
to connect the these paths, the user dir, want to create the user directory and the argument to the script file into something that we can execute. And the reason I played around with the Java version was to figure out whether we can use in this place, for example, path.off, which is new in 11, or we have to use paths.get, which is Java 8. But that's just an indicator, right, for every other feature. So we now we're stuck to Java 8, which, by the way, means we should really say the project to Java 8. There you go. Okay. Path. Dot off this. Uh, no, I just said it's the other one. Oh, God damn it, what am I like? There we go. And what is that? User directory. There's a name for the directory. Oh, is it home? No, there's a name for the directory where the application is launched. And I think user dear is just a Java version of. Java way to say that. I think there's a name for that. I don't think it's user dear, but let's just use user dear anyway. Okay. Although I think we don't need that because we can say we do check arcs uh, maybe handle um, options beyond. Um, so, you know, we want to check whether arcs actually has a zero element. And then we also want to make sure that we later, all right, so that we pass command line flags to them through the script. I don't know. So maybe, maybe we want to have command line flags here somehow so we can take, we can tell our wrapper what to do. I don't know whether that works, but you know, never mind. That's not that important. I uh, can do that uh, later. So that's not the user dir actually now anymore because we add paths.get resolves this patch essentially. Actually, I think the other one is clear. We could do it like this, which as far as I know is exactly the same thing, but uh, it's clear. So we start with that part. We even want to call that user dir then. User dir, user, user dir. And this is not user dear, this one then is the script, script. And then we want to run the script, right? Let's do that, let's run the script. I only know the process builder from, uh, because it changed in Java 9, so I'm not actually sure how exactly to use it here. Uh, process builder. Text of commands, I think. You just put the commands here. Java 11. Does that work? Would that work? I don't know. So what I want to do now, by, by, by the way, I should maybe tell you what I'm trying to do here. Oh no, let's use this path here, because it's the same path. What I want to do now is, uh, I want to actually, I want our wrapper to be invisible except for the time that it takes to launch it. I want to take the I want to take the script file that is handled to us and put the path together correctly and then give that to the JVM. And I basically want to be our, our wrapper to be transparent, to be invisible, because it just does the same thing except that it takes longer. Um, so it doesn't make it shouldn't make a difference whether that's here or the path to the actual Java 11 executable is there. Executable is there. So that's my goal. So this is the executable and then I think we just um, absolute path, I guess. What is it? To absolute path. There we go. We have that there. And then we start that. No? Is there not a start method on process builder? What is it? Oh, IO exception, I guess. IO exception, of course, IO exception. Okay, start that. Okay, let's run the demo, let's see. So for those, for those of you who came by later, ah, oh, damn it, there's an output. But it did things, right? It took, a time, it took its time.
What else are I afraid of? That I'm like putting these things together. Okay. Um, what do we do now? I think we. I think we. We've done something. I think uh, that's something that's that's worth. That's worth uh, capturing a commit. I think. Although I would like to. I would, so. Well, I would like to find out whether this actually does what I want it to do. At the same time, I don't want to invest all the time into researching how to put the input and output pipes together because yes, I want to do that next, but I don't want to do that as part of this commit. So, right, so I want to check whether this works, but I don't want to invest to make sure that the commit is kind of like yeah, atomic and works as it is, but I don't want to figure out all of that. So how, what would be the easiest way to figure out whether the script does what it's supposed to do? I think we do have to comp I think we do have to see the output because what I guess is maybe we're doing something wrong so this will most likely show us some output like couldn't do this couldn't do that which is why we get system exit 1 it's not actually running our script it's w which is also why we don't see any changes so we do have to get the output after all okay so I was told that this is going this is going to be the solution <laughs> java 7 java doc but sure is going to be wrong Redirect, uh, start what we're looking at inherit io Inherit, inherit IO. Okay, there, inherit IO. Sets the source and destination for subprocess sender IO to the, be the same as those of the current Java process. This looks very good. This is a convenience method, an invocation of the form. Good, let's do that. Process builder, inherit IO. So now we get all the things in here. That's pretty neat. Script process, process builder. Inherit IO. <laughs> Cannot find or load main class home Nipa called Kadi Saddle Boo. Let's go back to this. What we see here. Is the is the is this thing complaining that it could not find that main class? All oh, right, ha ha ha! We need this option source eleven. I alluded to that earlier. If on the site you want to learn more about uh, scripts and with Java, don't look for Java scripts. That's not a good idea. You can Google for I think Java and Shebang, and you will get to my article. Use this one. That's the best one. <coughs> Use any other, I don't care. Uh, the point is, this is the blog post I wrote, and here's the, like, it's a total rundown of how the whole scripting thing works, and it does actually explain why when we use the shebang line, we need this thing here. I'm not sure in which detail it explains it, uh, but it's technical. It makes sense, but it's not important to us now. This should work then, maybe? <laughs> Booyah! Yeah, we just executed the script. How awesome is that? Get a man, and I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Let's get push this. Okay. So anybody out there who cloned this, you should now be, if you're on Linux, right, you should now be able to recreate this way um, of having the wrapper actually wrap something, which is now Java 11. Now we get to the really interesting bit. Let's compile this shit. Let's see how we can use Graal at all. But that's the stuff for upcoming videos. I show you how to use Graal to ahead of time compile the script that Kalis gets handed, how to put the node disk in a way that we can find it later, and then finally, to either run the native image to be really, really fast, or if we don't have it yet, run the script as is, 
and compile the script in the background so the next time it will be really, really fast. If that interests you, subscribe here on YouTube. And if you want to join me the next time I work on Kali's, head over to Twitch where I'm NipaFX and follow me there. And the best way to stay in touch is Twitter where I'm also NipaFX. So long!